Hi everyone, Ms. Arpeza here. Today we are going to be making a picture based on the Narrows of a Zion National Park. And in this painting, it uh, pretty much shows us uh, the beautiful sceneries that you will find in this area. And uh, you can see the walls of the canyon just uh, kind of immersing towards each other as people start walking into the further areas, the narrow areas of the canyon. And um, the narrows pretty much are these uh, sections in between the canyon walls that get narrower and narrower as you're walking into it. And um, you can see the different color variations of the cliffs there. And you can also see that there's like a little stream coming in between. Because of course there's uh, water from the snow and there's water traveling down these rocky areas. So um, on our picture, we're gonna be representing all these features and trying to make a beautiful painting out of it. One of the cool things about being an artist is that I can have these uh, special little tools that can help me and guide me as to finding a pretty good image for my pictures. And what I like to do is I like to think of these as little photographs. Now you can actually make one of these. This is called a viewfinder. And you can just cut out a little rectangle shape. Fold it in half. And just cut out another rectangular shape right in the center. And you can use this as a viewfinder to help you capture good images. So for instance, if I kind of move it around, you can see how my perspective changes depending on what it is that I'm seeing within that little section there. So that's what artists like to use in order to capture something interesting to their eye. So they'll just focus on this particular area and that is what they will use to create something very interesting. If you move it closer to you, of course, you're going to have a larger view of the whole scenario. If you move it away from you, you're going to have something more specific that you're going to be focusing on. So it just depends on the size of your viewfinder. Um, also, your hands can be a great viewfinder as well. You can have one placed facing you, have the other hand faced opposite to you the other way and you put them together and so if you kind of move it around you can see how you can capture a nice view because that section in the center there is going to give you the whole scenario that you're going to be placing into your canvas and of course you can also change it over just like your viewfinders you can have it horizontal or you can have it vertical so this is a great tool for you guys to try out, maybe practice at home, go to your backyard, go to your front yard, um, and just kind of move it around, kind of see everything around you. And you're going to find some interesting areas where your eye is going to be like, oh, that would be a cool picture right there. So try that at home. Maybe that's something interesting for you to try at home. Okay, so these are the tools that we're gonna need for our project today. Um, we're gonna need a pencil just to make some very brief highlights. So we're gonna need a mixing tray, a uh, foam plate, or any other type of plate will work. Um, we're also gonna need some napkins. I like to keep a napkin underneath my water cup because it will be easier for me to wipe my brush as I'm going along. I need a water cup with some water, a paintbrush, a canvas, and then I also need my three primary colors, which are blue, red, yellow, and then I also need my neutral colors, which are black and white. So with these five colors here, we can make about any color or just about any other color that we want. So for instance, if we were to mix, let me get these out of the way. If we were to mix the yellow and the red, that will give us orange. If we were to mix yellow and blue, that would give us green. 
and if we were to mix the red and the blue that would give us violet and the combination of all three primary colors will give us brown which we will be using definitely for our project now anytime we add our neutral colors which are white and black we are going to either tint our colors by adding white which makes our colors light or we can shade our colors by adding black which will darken up our colors so shading and tinting our colors will change the tone of the color depending on what tone we want to have we want to make it dark darker darkest we want to make it light lighter lightest so it just depends now those two are neutral colors and these two here uh, these three here are primary colors with our primaries we can make secondaries and of course brown and with our neutrals we can tint our colors if we add white or we can shade our colors if we add black so that's kind of like the overall uh, mixing techniques that we can have with those three or five colors together okay so those are the ones that we're going to be using um, make sure you guys keep some um, napkins handy and we're going to go ahead and get started with our project so for the first thing we're going to do is we're going to kind of think about this area here this is just a small section that we're going to be working with to create our kind of like a little stream so about a fourth of a way up towards our canvas here we're going to create a line just very very soft and subtle you can barely even see it which is going to come across you don't want to have a nice uh, dark line not for this project because that line is going to be kind of gone towards the end so we also want to have another line that is going to come and shape the creek area so here is a reference to our project if you notice it comes out and towards the edges of the canvas there so we're going to make one coming this way towards the center and oop, just coming out 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 and about and then on the other side same thing coming in from the center and out 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 and about there we go okay so these lines are going to be totally disappeared towards the end that's just a reference mark okay and then these here are going to help us and guide us as to where we need our river or our stream to go in so what i'm going to do is i'm just gonna since these are gonna be gone i'm just gonna go in there with my eraser and get rid of those lines just so they're not on my way and they don't have to be completely gone just as long as you don't see the main marks of your pencil and now we can go ahead and move on to our mixing and we're going to be using our plate here to add our mixtures so in this case i'm going to start off with the water part and for that i'm going to be using some blue so i'm going to add some blue into my tray just a little bit not too much and i'm going to blend it in with some water mix 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 so it can be diluted and watery it's going to flow much much better and we're going to go ahead and apply it on the little river stream area that we have in this section here now i want to use sideways strokes as i'm painting in towards the center part And just make sure to keep your brush strokes consistent as you want to paint that area making it seem as if the water is kind of flowing downward and 
Give it a little bit more here. And there we go. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take my brush, dip it in the water, kind of rub off the excess amount of paint, and then tap it on my towel. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to just rub off some of that paint going from side to side on my canvas blue area where I added the water part just going to wipe going from side to side so that it kind of creates the illusion of water coming down and maybe in the end we can add some little rocks here and there but for now we just want to get that contrast with the lights and the stream there we go so basically you're just removing some of that excess amount of paint with your paintbrush and wiping as you go along and I think I'm happy with what I have there. So now we're going to move on to our background. Okay, so for our background area, as you guys can see, I started with the water area first, just because in my regular paintings, I usually start with my sky and then go on from my ground area. But in this case, we don't have a sky to work with. We have the long canyon walls that are going to be situated in this area so what i did was just added the water so that now i can start working on my browns because all this area is going to make up the cliffs so what i'm going to do is make some brown now now in order to make our brown we're going to start off with some yellow and we need plenty of yellow so make sure your brush is nice and clean and dry we're going to scoop up some of that yellow maybe one two three four four good nice thick scoops of the yellow into our plate and um, notice how i was just kind of scooping in like a spoon and now I'm going to go ahead and move on to the red. Scoop up one of the red. Wipe my brush. And some blue. So I'm also going to get some of that blue. Just scoop up once. And mix together. So as we mix it, we're going to start to see our brown color pop up and there we go now if you notice that it's too much on the green side you can add more red and if you notice it's too much like a brick red then you can add just a little tiny bit more blue so I think I like that brown and I'm happy with it that's the one that I'm going to be using. Now, if I want to make this area lighter, so in this part right here, we notice that it's a little bit lighter there. So that's kind of like this area here. So we're going to go ahead and tint our color, which is brown. We're going to tint it with some white. And we're going to go ahead and kind of wipe off our brush. Make sure that you remove the excess amount of paint by kind of rolling it around just like that. It kind of releases the paint onto your tray. And let's go ahead and add a little bit of white on there. I'm just going to add it on the side here. And there we go. Now I have a light brown to work with. And with this light brown, what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring it on 
and start it off right in that section there where my kind of little stream flow is going. Now, if I take a look at my painting or my picture here as reference, it goes up and kind of curves out. And then this one also kind of curves inward. So let's go ahead and just reference those lines onto our canvas. We're going to do that with the light brown color. That's for one side and uh, this is for the other side here. I'm going to bring this one a little bit further away. Okay, so all this area here is going to be painted in this light brown. Now I also want to make it light, so I'm going to add some water to my paint and spread it out. Okay, so now with that same light brown that I already have here, I'm just going to add a little bit of water there. And I'm just going to focus in this little section here. Just that part where there's going to be kind of like a section where there's going to be little rocks and pebbles to come into the river area. So all the section here, it's going to be in that nice light brown as well as the opposite section here. We're going to add some light brown here as well. So let's go ahead and fill that in before we move on to our next step. Notice how I'm just adding water to spread out my paint. All right, so for my next set of clips here, I'm going to start off with some dark brown. And for that, I will need some black. I'm going to just add a tiny bit of black into my brown that I already have. And let's clean our brush really well. Just the tiny tip of your brush. You can just dip it in. And let's mix it into the side of our brown. Mix, mix, mix really well. If you need to add a little tiny bit more, go ahead, but not too much. We don't want to have it too, too, too dark. Okay, so it's just dark enough. And there we go. Now we have a nice dark brown color to work with. You can just add a little bit more if you'd like. And just dipped it in. Oop. So it's very, very dominant as you can see. So just a little bit will go a long ways when you're shading your colors just because the black tends to be so dominant okay so here we go now i have a nice dark brown there to work with mix 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 really good until you're happy with the tone all right i'm happy with that so what i'm going to do is i'm going to follow this line here and just come right down and add a little bit of water and up to that area there where they meet where the water and the cliffs meet you stop right there and then just kind of bring it across now we're going to go ahead and fill in this area just by adding water you're not going to add any more paint, just water right there. Okay, so just kind of fill in that area. And we're going to do the same thing to this other side. Spread it out real good. Okay, there we go. All in that section there. So we're going to do the same thing on this side. Take my paint, need some water to it just so that it can help us go all the way down. And 
and we'll go up to that area there and spread out that paint. Fill it in really good. There we go. And now we're going to go ahead and we're going to use our regular brown for the next step. So I'm not even going to mix it. Just add water to it, and I'm going to go ahead and make my next reference mark. This time I'm going to come a little bit lower, come sideways, and just kind of shape it up like a cliff. Spread it out with some water. And a little bit more paint. And there we go. We have our next little cliff segment there. Pull it in really good. And we're going to do that to the other side as well. So we're going to just bring it on. Downward and sideways. Fill it in. Now remember, if you guys run out of some of this paint, you can always mix more. And there we go. Now I have my kind of like a closer view of my cliff there. So it's going further into the distance. And then I'm going to have my lightest one here. So now I need to add some white to my brown. And I'll take my white, mix it into my brown, mix, mix, mix really well, and that's going to be my lighter tone. So this area here, you can go a little bit further down and paint that in. Blend it in between, and there we go. So we'll do that for the other side. And so it's kind of like the cliff is going into the distance. And it's also changing its colors as the light changes within that area. So I'm just going to go in there and fill all that section in. Okay, now so to make some more detail into my canyon walls or my little cliff areas there, I'm going to make some more brown. And for that, I'm going to be using the side of my tray where it's nice and open and clean so that I can get a good mixture of that brown. So I'm going to dip once, dip twice, three times, four times into the yellow. Make sure you get all of that paint onto your plate so it doesn't go to waste. So just kind of spin your brush around. Now I'm going to get a little bit of blue. Just 
just one dip into that blue and one dip into that yellow I'm sorry with that red into the red mix 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 all three of them together and there is our brown now I want to add just a tiny tiny bit of the black into my brown Go ahead and do that next. A little bit of that brown. Mix, mix, mix. Just gonna mix it on the side here. So half of it will be my regular brown and half of it will be my dark brown. Now with my dark brown, I can go ahead and start doing some detail. So make sure you mix it in really well. Once you have it nice and mixed, you can go in and just start. Well, let's go ahead and highlight our main shapes. First of all, so I'm going to go in there and just go into this one here. Kind of highlight it. And I'm also going to blend it in a little bit. So maybe using a little bit of that other brown. Blend it in. It's just so we don't have a striking line separating the two. There we go. And I'm going to do the same thing for this final one here. Get my dark brown, bring it all the way down. And now I'm going to kind of blend it in just a tiny bit with my brown there. Blend, blend, blend. If you have too much paint on your brush, just make sure you tap it off and blend it in. There we go. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. Just so that we can give more definition to our cliff area on each side of our painting. So once we have our cliffs and we have uh, defined them, now we can go ahead and start adding some detail on the cliffs. So for my detail, I'm just going to go in there and make some just horizontal lines that curve or a little wavy to add some texture to my cliffs. I'm going to do that on both sides. So once I do it on one side, I go over and do the same thing on the other side. Just kind of do them randomly. So it seems as if those are the I like the little sections in between the ripples or the textured area of the clips there. And there we go. 
So now it seems like they have some texture on the sides. Okay. And now we're going to focus on the bottom area here. So for that section there, we can maybe put a few little bushes. So for the bushes, we can use green. And in order to make some green, I will need my yellow. Mix a little bit of yellow in there. One, two, three. And just a tiny bit of blue, just one blue. Mix it in. And we have our green. Now with our green, we can go ahead and just tap some of the areas that we want to have. Little bushes growing or trees towards the bottom part here. You can just tap, tap, tap your brush to make it look like there's some green life in this area here. Now I want to add a little bit of white into there. I'm going to add some white onto my tray and just kind of tap, tap, tap some of the white in there. Get white, tap, 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 tap for some light source and contrast into my green areas. And there we go. So I just have a few little sections there. Okay. All right. And finally, I'm going to add some rocks. So we can use some of the browns that we already have. And just kind of bulk up some of these little rocks here and there. Some can be in the water. Some can be outside of the water. And I put some tiny ones just by dotting it. And then over here too. Some bigger ones. somewhere in the water just kind of tap it make it look like little rocks We're all set. We have our beautiful painting based on the Narrows of Zion National Park. So here we go, you guys. Hope you enjoyed it. Thank you so much. And I'll see you guys next time.